Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Uh, we're working on one of the drills from the Mix 6 today. Uh, I have six exercises that the armed citizen should practice each day and they're all based around the draw. We know the draw is the most important part of this process. It's also the most likely to be failed or flubbed. And a lot of people don't draw and practice as they carry. Sometimes our hands are engaged in other activities. Sometimes we have to make a transition. Today we're going to talk about the failure to neutralize which was originally called the Mozambique drill, which was to the body, one to the head. Uh, failure to neutralize is I fire two shots and I've seen no effect, so I move to another area. There's several reasons this could be happening. If somebody was wearing body armor and it was having no effect on them, so I moved to the head. And uh, it's important to understand that there's a real difference between shooting the body and shooting the head. Uh, a lot of people say it's hard to shoot the head because it moves a lot. And I'm going to tell you as a mixed martial arts instructor, the hardest thing that I teach all the time is to get people to move their heads. Uh, this is our viewing apparatus and we tend to keep it pretty still. We don't do this a lot when we're moving. When we're running, our head does, but if you watch sprinters, they have a pretty straight position with their head. They really like to lock it in. So it is an option for us, okay? And especially if we're not getting the effect that we want. But we only have the ocular zone, all right? The ocular zone is really small. You see a representation of a lot of different targets back here. Uh, we've got one with a little triangle. That's a pretty good representation of that sinus region in the eyes. All right, we have one here. This is a nice representation of this area. Okay, uh, this is really tight, like an ipsic type target. That's a really good target for this. And this is a little more generous, about the size of a fist. So we're right in here. All of them represent that area. For us, we need to spot aim. We need to know that we're coming in right through the ocular zone. All right, we need to pick a good area, not just anywhere on the head. This. This does not all count. It can't because we've got big bone matter up there and uh, the skull is very good at protecting the brain. That's what it was built for and it will reroute a lot of damage. So we've got to make sure we get into through the open cavities. Now, what's the big problem with transitions? Well, people waste a lot of time. They overdrive the gun. Uh, they're very loath to move off the target to the next one. So they tend to really push or overdrive the gun. Firing to the body, we see a lot of misses over the top of the head because people fire here and then overdrive the gun. If you fire two shots, it's in recoil already, the gun's going up. Uh, from using the Manus X-10 and using the recoil program, I'm seeing somewhere between 18 to 25 degrees movement in recoil. All right, so that's far more than you need to move the pistol from here to here. It's a very little, little bit of motion to move it up to the head at distance. So don't overdrive the gun. Now, what's the time factor on this, okay? If you had a two second draw, which I feel is the minimum for the armed citizen because we have a seven to 10 second attack window usually. Two seconds is a long time to draw the gun. So I draw and fire one shot in two seconds. I follow up with a one second follow up. That's three seconds. I give a second and a half to the head. That's four and a half seconds. It's a long time, okay? Four and a half seconds on this drill is uh, more than adequate to do the drill and have plenty of time to do it. But you need a starting point. If you're not very good, you're not used to the timer, it's really hard to do that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work through the timer. I wanna keep the idea of what's gonna tell me how fast I can shoot is the sights. The sights are gonna tell me. Uh, there are three sight pictures or sight movies, as Gabe White calls them, that we wanna keep in our mind. And this comes from Max Michel. Uh, one is called floating, one is called flash, and one is called focus. A flash sight picture is, boom, it's just up there. For me, I just see the dot on the target and it's in the general vicinity. It's very close, it's very large, it's looming. I can shoot that, all right? A floating sight picture is I need to put it in a smaller area, but it's floating inside of that. That's perfect. And a focus sight picture is I gotta put it right through here. I've gotta pick a spot like right here and put it through that position. So that's gonna tell me how quickly I can press the trigger to the rear. Tom Givens uses three trigger speeds. You know, I find most people on a range only have one trigger speed. Uh, the really accurate shooters have precise and the fast shooters have uh, uh, quick. Well, you need to have three speeds because your sight's gonna tell you how quickly you can press. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. There's quickly, which is very close. That would go with a flash sight picture. There's carefully, smaller target. It needs a bit of uh, more precision in it, but it has some allowance of error. And then there's the final one, which is precisely. You're going to precisely press to the rear and you're going to shoot a focus sight picture. At no time should your finger stop moving. What we do is we change the speed that it moves at. Okay? It could move very quickly or very slowly. Today I'll be using the cert pistol a little bit so you can actually see what's going on. Here's a great representation of trigger speed. All right? 
So if I was firing multiple rounds and this was my trigger speed, this would be uh, flash. That's point twos. You know how I know? Because I'm always point twos at this speed. All right, that's just over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, if I needed to slow it down and I have a floating sight picture and I'm at point three or point four relative to the distance, matters in the distance, it's gonna look more like this. Never stop moving, but I'm giving it more respect. And then the final speed is that precision press and the focused sight picture will look. And I'm going to release and reset it. I'm not going to pin it to the rear. I don't gain a lot by pinning it while the gun's recycling. What I simply want to do is be ready to shoot again when everything settles down. So I'd be ready to shoot sooner instead of holding the trigger to the rear and simply resetting it. Now I know a lot of you have been taught that way, but really apply some logic here. The slide's going back and forth. Okay. What should your finger be doing? It should be setting. If the gun's resetting, you should be resetting. And then you make the decision, do I need to shoot another shot or is the event over and I can stop shooting now? But when you're here, you have a dead gun. And all the aiming you're doing is dead until you release it. As soon as I release it, if you watch the muzzle, boom, the muzzle moves. So think about that as you're pinning the trigger. See if that logic works for you. If you don't, continue on with it. It will hurt your time, so. Okay? So there is a trade-off in that. It's very slow. Okay? Uh, precision rifle shooters use it a lot because the bullet's got to exit a very long barrel, so we want to hold very still. But the pistol, we don't have that same problem. So Claude Warner and uh, uh, Bill Rogers use the flip and uh, press another, flipping the trigger and recycling it each time. I think that's the right way to do this. Uh, but I don't want to tell you what to do. I want you to explore it. Okay? Your opinion now may be very different in three months. Uh, a lot of people I know have changed what they believe to be the absolute truth in this moment. And a year from now, they'll have a different absolute truth. So let's be open to the information. Don't take it as a personal attack. Just take it as information. And you process it and see what's right for you. The only way you're going to know is you're going to need to use this guy. He's going to tell you the truth. Okay? And he's going to put a bit of pressure on you. All right, so let's look at our draws now. So we talked about a four and a half second, real slow, methodical process in this to get to the body and one to the head. So let me set it up for you guys real quick. Fun watching me set a timer, isn't it? Appreciate you all bearing with me. These things take a bit of time. You could be doing it at home too, getting ready. So I have a four and a half second draw. Hand position could be down or up. I'm gonna do several of each. Uh, I tend to be a tenth faster with my hands down. Some of you are faster with your hands up. Okay, hands up, very close, very good, defensive, all right? Hands down, I haven't signaled any intent yet. I can even get a little bit of a cheater position by grabbing my shirt. They both have advantages and disadvantages. Life is about compromise, and these are some of the compromises we make in the personal protection world. All right, so let's see what a four and a half second uh, draw and two of the body and one to the head looks like. my time, slowing down, going to have a little look around, get myself out, put the brakes on, and make sure that I holster slowly and reluctantly. All right, so four and a half seconds, uh, no problem, to the body, one to the head. I made lunch, I checked my sundial, I had all sorts of extra time. What I have to do is just be efficient. All right, visualize my task, exhale, and then follow through. You almost make like a path in your mind of what everything looks like in advance, and then your, your mind recognizes that. If you say fast or slow, you never know which lever you're pulling. If I say fast, for some people that means tension or uh, being a spaz, being erratic. Uh, if I say slow, it means just take the mistakes you're doing now and make them over a longer period of time. So I don't know what fast and slow means, but I know what visualizing is. So I'm going to visualize what I want. Now an intermediate shooter, we put him in about three seconds. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. So this is a second and a half draw for one shot and then maybe a 0.5 for the follow-up shot and then a second for the head shot. Okay. should be pretty doable for most of us. Uh, with a little bit of practice, I'd find, I think you'd find this uh, easy enough to do. Now, if you're doing the image-based decision drills that we sell, you have five seconds, so you have to look at the visual cue, you have to decide what the right thing is, and then the target's there. We use a negative target, so the bullets go through it, and they leave no mark. We've cut out the center, we've cut out the head, but the misses leave a mark. That's a very interesting thing, because you can't look to the target for confirmation. It's a great way to shoot. Negative targets are a really good way to shoot because you get out of the habit of looking at it. Imagine me getting shot in a shirt right now. Are you going to see a hole? You're not going to see anything in this shirt. All right? Talking about little bitty guys 
and they'll make very big holes. Uh, this shirt over here has been shot up because we use it over a target and you can barely see the holes in it. All right, so you're not going to get that kind of feedback like you get from paper. So the only thing that feeds it back to you is you seeing the sights. You've got to pay attention to the sights. Sights tell you how fast you can go. So let's see what that looks like. Three seconds now. Okay, so made that with plenty of time. I hope you did the same. And uh, we're gonna keep working our way down because you don't wanna watch me shoot all day, but I'm giving you a practice strategy here so you can get a little bit faster. The key to getting faster is to be uncomfortable. Um, when you can just, when you can make it all the time, take a tenth off the timer and try to work at that speed until you can make that. We make tenth increments of improvement on the timer. All right, and after a year of practice, if that's happened, four or five times or six times to you, you've taken you know, half a second off or whatever you're doing, that's a pretty substantial improvement. Maybe a full second if you're really ineffic inefficient at what you're doing. All right, let's see. So this time we'll do two seconds, or let's do a two five, because that's, that's pretty good for most people. So two five. All right, so we have two and a half seconds. So what does that mean? Um, it means I have one and a quarter second draw, okay, and then I have probably a 0.3 split on that. So, you know, I'm at 1.65 or 1.55 right now, somewhere in that range. And then I'm going to move to the head, and I'm going to take a half a second to a 0.75, somewhere in that range. So that gives me about 2.5. It's a pretty good speed to be at with this. Uh, you can have a great deal of precision, but you're not wasting time doing things that don't matter. Remember, drawing is administrative. I want to get the gun out. Aiming is what's important. Pressing the trigger is what's important. But getting the gun out is, until I get that done, I can't do any of that. But as soon as we tell people to aim more, what we see is a real slowdown in their draw. Like going slow and aiming in the holster will help us. But it never will. We've got to be quick with this. So let's see what this looks like. 2.5. And that's good. I had a little fumble with the shirt. Uh, I'm wearing my tight-fitting shirt today so I can show off my fabulous physique. Just kidding. Okay, uh, it's just it clings to the body and sometimes when I go to pinch it, I don't quite get it. But I still made it. I know from training when that happens on the clock, that cost me .2. And I want those to happen because I realize I can stay in the fight no matter what. I still made the par time. I had time to spare and I didn't let the mistake stop me and make me start over. It's a real problem just constantly start over because you don't learn to work through things. Uh, human beings make mistakes and then we work through it and we get better. Uh, you don't eliminate all mistakes and then get better. It just doesn't work that way. You have to recognize them, you have to work through them and get better at them each time. All right, so for you hot shooters out there, uh, let's do two seconds. Okay, even if you can't do it, try along with us. You got two seconds to draw, so Gabe White, in his class, he says it's a second on this, uh, I think a 0.25 to the next shot, so it's your 1.25 and then a 0.5 for the headshot, okay? And that's from non-concealment. If you have concealment on, you get a 0.25. And concealment is important because this is how you're going to walk around, all right? No matter what, this is the best way for you to carry a firearm because nobody knows you have it until it comes out. It's a very safe way for you to carry it. Nobody's going to try to take it away from you. And it's a surprise to the other person. We want to surprise them with this one. We don't want them to know that it's coming. Okay? A lot of people believe if they open carry that they're going to keep people from actually approaching them. But sometimes you just you have a different type of predator that comes after you. He decides that you're an opportunistic uh, position that he could take your firearm from you. So think about that. I'm not saying don't open carry, but I would prefer that you conceal carry because we want to surprise the guy. All right? And they will feel like this is an unfair advantage, and we want every advantage we can get. Okay, every advantage we can get. If you do open carry, really, uh, I would hope that you have some sort of retention device on it, and you do some sort of uh, combatives that allow you to keep a firearm. Okay, concealed carry. This is very quick. Now, from the side, I'd have the same sort of pull. I'm doing it from the front, so it's going to be from here. It's a little quicker than from the side. Uh, we see about a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 difference in the draw because my hand has further to travel. It's just basic physics. My hand just travels from here. But a lot of people are not comfortable carrying this way. Uh, you need to have a long-barreled weapon so it sits over your pelvis. 
you need to have a holster that's made exactly for AIWB, which is appendix carry, and then you need to practice with it. Uh, remember, if you reholster and you can't your gun in like this and you shoot yourself through the pelvis and it's a uh, transitional shot across this way, a transsectional shot, it's just as bad if you shoot yourself in the front. So you have to be very careful holstering. Holstering is always a big problem for us. We have to slow our brain down. All right, here comes our two-second drill. Take that pause, slow it down, put the brakes on, okay? Open up your vision. My vision was just dialed right down to that very small focus and that was very helpful for me, but I need to open it up after the event. Okay, so we have a focal vision of one to three degrees right here. It's very small, what we see really clearly. Everything else is in our ambient vision. We don't see very clearly, we have far less detail. We pick up motion in that. Um, you can't do both at the same time. So I want you to, to see the front sight or see the target with the red dot on it and make a good transition. Don't overdrive the gun. Don't put extra energy into it. All right, that was quick. Uh, still no problem making it on this side. So uh, my practice time on this in dry practice, uh, I've shot this drill uh, quite a bit. Uh, I think right now, I, if you see, I got numbers up here. I keep the numbers up here. Uh, failure to neutralize, I've pushed ahead a lot this year. I can do it in a 1.5 or a 1.6. Uh, under perfect situation. So I know the stimulus is coming. I'm standing there. I got a good preparatory index and I'm looking at the target. So that's my absolute speed. That's not what I'm going to be when I fight, but that is me with a full throttle and being set. And that's a good way to practice. It gives me a lot of time to get the gun out and then do the aiming if I need to. So just for fun today, let's go to a 175. Now let's just make it a 17. So this is a 1.7, okay? From concealment, a 1.7. We're really pushing a little bit here, okay? So I want to make sure my feet are pointing towards the target. I want my body to be relaxed. I want to take a deep cleansing breath. And I want to visualize, all right? What am I going to see? What am I going to see? Get my hands relaxed, get all the tension out of my body. All right, I'm going to press the button, stand by. Now let me tell you what I saw. Uh, my first shot would have gone a little bit to the left side for me because uh, I saw my sight over there and I adjusted on the second and the third shot was good. So I'm getting a little information by calling my shots now. And that's very helpful because I'm just focusing on the only thing that matters. So let's do that one more time. Let's see if we can get a little cleaner draw. So that was a lot better, okay? really focused in on what was important and improved it. Hey, now, you have no idea where those shots are going. You just have to take my word for it. So let's look over my shoulder and see what it looks like here. Okay, This won't be from the draw, but we'll see the shots going into the target. So from a low ready, pretty quick. See a little bit of movement in there. That's an acceptable amount of wobble for me. And I'm to the body, one to the head. Let's watch it again. Okay. You can see those were good hits. Everything was good. So this is a really useful thing for me to practice with. So that's your failure to neutralize. Uh, a negative target's a way to go. Cut out the center. All right. Uh, practice it over and over again until you can do it naturally. This is a great drill of transition. We have a small transition from here to here. All right. But that should equate from here to here. So if we had two targets, we're starting to practice transitioning from one target to the next. And it's uh, the smallest firearms drill I know uh, with the greatest amount of value. All right? Being able to draw and fire two shots measures your recoil control, your draw, and the way you press the trigger. And then the transition to the head measures your transition to the head. And then shooting a very small target requires a focused precision shot to go into the ocular cavity. I hope you enjoy that. Our image-based decisional drills has this in its, in its content, and it's a very important exercise over and over again because we're trying to get the most out of your shooting with the least amount of ammo expense. So all this can be dry practiced. Then you're on the range. You can dry practice it some more. Then you shoot it, measure it, measure it, measure it. Always take your worst time, not your best time. Okay? Your worst time is more likely who you are. Okay? And remember the worst time. If you've got to quote it, quote your worst time. Uh, because that's 
an easier measurement. What everybody does is shoot it 20 or 30 times and then they get their very best time and they say, okay, now I can shoot it in a 1.5, but they can't do that on demand. They only did it two times out of 20, which is 10%. So that maybe 10% of the time they can do it. That's not who you are. Uh, the, the other guy is somewhere in the average of the other 18 shots that you did shoot. All right, so if it takes you a little bit longer, that's fine. Keep that, keep that score on hand, keep writing it down, keep addressing it and trying to improve. You're gonna get much better at practicing. Everything can be done at home. This is the time to get better with your dry practice. You have a little bit of drill. Pick a drill and do it over and over. I wanna recommend two sources for you uh, and some of the information comes from this. Uh, number one is uh, Mike Sieglander with American Warrior Society. He's, got a, he's been doing this for five years, putting these videos out. He's got a great selection, he's a great shooter, he's a good guy, and he's very versatile. His background is impeccable. Uh, another person I uh, ask you to look at is Scott Jelinski, uh, Modern Samurai Project. Scott's really worked on the efficiency of the draw. He has some very good videos out there for you to work your way up. And some of this information came from Steve Anderson. Uh, he's a great shooter, grandmaster. It is more competitive based, but it doesn't mean the tactical shooter can't be influenced by competitive techniques. Uh, Gabe White likes to call us the technical Timmies when we're really searching out technical perfection and pushing and trying to get better at it. So there's some sources for you. I'm always here, completecombatant.com. Uh, reach out to me, I'll be glad to help you. Leave your comments and remember, uh, we're all trying to get better. In two years from now, I'm going to be much better at this than I was because I'm going to get up every day and practice, and I expect you guys to do the same thing. Get up, practice, get better at this. Let us help you if we can. Check out some of those other links and buy one of those image-based decisional drills so you can practice decision-making, not only technical skills, because that's really the self-defense world. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys soon.